This episode is brought to you by Delete Me. Get 20% off when you use my coupon code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S, at joindeletemecom slash Morse code. I am sure you've seen the headlines about this. 16 billion passwords were stolen for Google, Facebook, Apple accounts, among others. I really felt the need to break this down. Real talk, because a lot of clickbait headlines and misconstrued link headers were making people think that this was one massive cybersecurity data hack of these specific companies. So let's just sit down for a sec. Where's my drink? So let's just sit down for a sec, have some tea, or in my case, some zero calorie soda water, which does not taste as good as a Coca-Cola, and actually read the source because that's not what actually happened. So here's the deal. Security researchers from Cyber News stumbled across 30 exposed databases holding a collective 16 billion records. And before you panic, no, this was not Apple, Google, or Facebook themselves getting hacked directly. The link actually actually came from a mess of info stealers. That's malware that sneaks onto your device. It can scrape up logins and passwords and cookies, the whole shebang. And they uploaded it to cyber criminal websites to add them to databases to sell or whatever. Cyber News pointed out in their post that they had been making a record of how much was found since the start of the year. And each data set contains tens of millions of records, but altogether it's 16 billion separate entries. Now of those 30 data sets, only one had even been reported before. The rest of them are brand new, hot off the dark web press. So some of the data from the 30 data sets could be overlapping, so you might see the same password exposed in more than one data set combined. Also, the data is recent. It's not all recycled from older breaches, which indicates to us that there is a recent rise in the use of info stealing malware to scrape data from networks and devices. It's likely the data came from both malware as well as credential stuffing attacks and as well as some older recycled data. So throughout this report, they mentioned info stealers, and that is one type of malware that can infect a device through some kind of malicious downloads, like a PDF or a file sent over email. They quietly just chill on your device. They run in the background and they sniff around for data like saved passwords or autofill details that are on your browser, browser cookies, credit card numbers, and more. And apparently they are pretty widespread and commonly available for sale on dark web marketplaces. So it's really easy for an attacker to get access to them. And nowadays they're available for not just Windows devices, but you got mobile phones too and Mac OS. So nobody's safe. Now, luckily most of these data sets were only accessible for a limited time unsecured, but that's not a huge positive when anybody could be looking at those databases and finding these. The problem is some of these entries include things like session tokens and cookies and metadata along with the URL from the matching site, login details, your credentials, the password, and that's for big accounts like Apple and Google and Facebook, as well as a ton of smaller accounts too. A lot of those login sites can be seen as your priority logins since they are used to authenticate your email address, you could log into a new device, or you could use them on third party websites where it says like login with Google, login with Facebook. Those are OAuth authentication tokens, OAuth sign-ins. So in those cases, having those kind of passwords stolen is even worse. Now with stories like the one covered in this video, hearing about AI privacy issues, knowing that to travel overseas, sometimes visa applications need social media accounts, and personally getting an email that purported to be a YouTube video shared privately with me from YouTube the company, that was obviously fake. There are a lot of ways that people and agencies and companies too can invade your privacy and try to steal your data. That's why I continue to recommend Delete Me, which is my sponsor of this video, but also a company that I have been a customer of for a very long time. Data brokers are often the first stop for malicious reconnaissance and collecting your information because they make it so easy. These websites are basically used as a little search engine full of personal information 
information like your name, your email address, date of birth, physical home address, phone number, and more. So to combat this, I have used and trusted Delete Me for almost a decade now, long before I had started my own YouTube channel, because they make it so much easier to remove listings from these data brokers that match my information. So I set up an account on Delete Me, and they send out the opt-out requests, and they recheck those sites for matches on a recurring basis. Delete Me also implements really great encryption protocols. They safeguard your personally identifiable information, your PII, both in transit and at rest. And they also have a page dedicated to security info on their website at joindeleteme.com security. And you can actually contact them if you have any questions about that too. So do like I and so many of my cybersecurity friends do. It was actually a cybersecurity friend who recommended Delete Me to me in the first place years ago. And secure your data using Delete Me. Visit joindeleteme.com slash morse code and use the promo code snubs, that's S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off. That's joindeleteme.com slash morse code and use the coupon code snubs, S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off. That also works on family plans too. Thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring. Back to the news. And personally, I think that 16 billion number is a little bit overblown. And Cyber News notated several times that the data set has duplicated entries across them or overlapping entries. So it's likely less than 16 billion, but nobody has gone through the data sets with like a fine tooth comb just to make sure. Now, Bob Dyashenko, and I apologize if I pronounced your last name incorrectly, he's the cybersecurity researcher behind this discovery who put it quite frankly, this is not about the numbers, but the scale. And I agree 100%. Unfortunately, with a huge set of credentials like these and no way of knowing who also found them while they were public and no idea of who was behind the originating uploads, consumers are a little bit stuck. And if a malicious actor was behind them, they could hijack accounts or send phishing scams. They could steal your identities and possibly bypass weak two-factor authentication because the session tokens being stolen. An attacker could attempt to use those stolen passwords on other websites too, which can be bad news if you are out here reusing your passwords. And if you saw my recent video about passwords, hopefully you're not doing that. Or they could sell this data off to the highest bidder and data brokers can add data to their searchable databases too. Now, if you like this video, a subscribe would mean so much to me. I use subscriptions as an indicator that I'm actively building an audience here who is interested in these topics. And it lets me know that you find value in this kind of content. And if you just heard some whining behind the camera, it's because my dog Sookie wants to go outside. Do you want to go outside? Outside? You wanna go outside? Come here, come, come. Oh, can you see her? Oh, kind of. <laughs> okay, let's go outside. She 100% knows that word. So if I say the word outside, she's like, oh my God, do I get to go outside? It's a thing. So studio dog aside, <laughs> here's your to-do list. Write these down, do one a day or grab some popcorn and make it a whole like password changing party that you do in a day. Check have I been pwned? that's owned with a p.com. Plug in your email, see if you've been caught in any of the past data breaches or any of the ones that are currently available online. And if you have, breathe because I've got some other steps too. Number two, change your passwords and don't just slap like an exclamation mark at the end of it and just call it a day. Actually use something that's good. Use strong, unique passwords for every account. And if you groaned hearing that from me, that's what password managers are for. I use one, you should too, everybody I know uses password managers. They save your brain space and you can also use them to generate randomly created passwords. And then there are local options for password managers too. So you don't have to trust a multi-device platform if you don't want to. And I'm sure I'm going to hear somebody in the comments down below say, they don't trust password managers. And that's okay, I'm sure somebody will reply and give you some options that you can trust. So if anybody has some recommendations, just throw them down in the comments. Number three, enable 2FA on everything. Preferably using an app for your phone or even better, a hardware security key like a YubiKey because SMS-based two-factor authentication is 
pretty flimsy these days. And then we have number four, which is considering passkeys. If you have accounts that support them, like Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, all of them are rolling those out, passkeys replace passwords altogether with biometric security from your phone or your device. So you don't have passwords and you don't have to worry about your passwords getting stolen because they aren't there in the first place. I know that passkeys are still relatively new and uncommon. I have done a video about passkeys breaking them down and how they work, but they are slowly replacing the password usage. Your local device gets a private key and the website gets a key and those two keys have to match up in a fun little handshake with each other. The website only ever knows it's part of the key and then it just matches it up with your private device key to make sure that they match and that they're happy with each other. I know that's a very rudimentary explanation, but it's fine. <laughs> Go to the other video if you want an in-depth, detailed explanation of passkeys that goes on for like 10 minutes. I don't have the time in this video to do that. So if a site gets hacked, there's no password to steal, just portions of a key that won't make entire sense. You don't have to memorize a password. There's nothing to type in, so this defeats a lot of info stealers and potential hacks that could steal your account credentials. So it works out really well. Now, cyber news researcher Aras Nazarovas, and I hope I pronounced your name right, mentioned that stolen cookies and session tokens can sometimes be used to bypass 2FA methods, and not all services will reset cookies whenever you change your passwords. That's why some of your devices might still stay logged in, even after you've changed your password on another device. And that's a very true statement. So another thing you can do is reset the cookie settings on your local browsers and check what devices are logged in to online services and just log them all out. And you can usually find those through your settings for each of those different websites that you log into. And you can see if there's other devices logged in, it'll give you a list and you can log them out all separately or log them out all together. See, passwords were never meant to carry that much weight. They are a relic from the early, early internet days. And it's way past time that we moved on. So if you are not on pass keys yet, you can work on it, you can get there, try it with like one account first and you know, see if you like them. And if you do, hey, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Use two-factor authentication at least with a YubiKey. <laughs> if you are still reusing passwords from high school, prob, you should probably, you should, no, not just probably, you should change those. Just change them. Assuming that like you're my age and I was in high school like 20 years ago. So change them, please. Questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks again to delete me and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.